Welcome once again to Rhema Praise. You know, honey, I want to ask you a question. All right. This is the last of January. Right. Have you transitioned yet into 2016, or are you still thinking 2015? Well, now, wait a minute. That's a hard <laughs> question. Because uh, sometimes there's unfinished things that you try that you have to bring over into, but that's a transition, isn't that's it? That's right. That's and, right. And so, yeah, I guess I've transitioned. Transition. You know, you are... T I'm, talking about transition today. Yeah, and, how to successfully transition. Yes. Uh, because we, whether we realize it or not, life is a transition. You know, we I, are always transitioning, transitioning from something to something to something to something. I, I was thinking about the fact that, you know, of course, we transitioned a long time ago into the empty nest. And I don't yeah. know why people call it syndrome because I think it's the most wonderful thing in the world, you know, well, that we we've had, raised our kids. And now we had a chance to be go back just to us, and yes. then the grand boys and came. Then, yes. And that's the good thing. I'll that go. is the good thing. That is the grand thing. But, you know, so many people, when their kids are gone, they can't make the transition with just the two of them. And as you know, we celebrated in December... 50, 50 years, years of marriage. marriage, yes. And, you know, I mean, hey, transition happens. Yes. You know, uh, it, it actually, you should look at transition as an exciting time. That's right. Because your life is moving from one thing to another, uh, but it's challenging. Yeah, no, no doubt about it. It's challenging. Yes. But, uh, you know, what you have to realize is that you can't turn back. No. Yesterday. No. But you, you can can't boldly, change it either. No, you can't change it. But you can boldly face tomorrow. That's right. And, uh, you know, I say it all the time. Yesterday's over. That's Forget right. it. Forget there's it. nothing you can do about it. But there's something you can do about tomorrow. Yes. You know, wouldn't it be great? You know, we have automatic transmissions in the car, you mm -hmm. know. Wouldn't it be great in life if you just had, had a shifter and you just shifted in the D for drive. Yes. And then you just step on the pedal of life and you just automatically transition it's from one to the other. You know, happen. I remember when, when I first learned to drive, and uh -huh. you too, you know, I had, I had, had, stick I had, I had to, <laughs> I had to change the gears myself. Uh -huh. But then when you get an automatic transmission, it just does it for you. I know. And wouldn't it be nice if life was like that? It isn't. And you know what I'm thinking about? Life is kind of like the stick shift. Yeah. And I remember driving that. Sometimes you jerk. And it's just <laughs> jerk like this. Well, sometimes in life, when things come your way, you kind of jerk like that. And if don't you let you? off the clutch too fast, you stall out and have to restart. Yes, yes. That, that's sort of like life, though, isn't it? it that's, is. that's the real way. Hey, it why is. don't we go where I'm talking about how to transition successfully. I want to talk about making transition successfully. We, we make transitions in our life all the time. I mean, we, we, we have make transitions. Go to Isaiah 43, Isaiah 43, 18. Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth, shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Now here he was talking to Israel and he's telling him he's going to do something new in spite of what Israel's past had been. And if you study Israel, sometimes their past wasn't that good. <laughs> they, they were up and down. They, uh, you know, they would get in trouble and call out to God and then everything's going really good and they'd slip away and they'd have to call out to God again and he'd rescue them. And the Apostle Paul says that what happened to them happened as an example. Now that's an example for us not to follow. That's what, an example is something to follow or something not to follow. Well, that's something we don't want to follow. You know, the, uh, he said here, uh, don't remember or consider the past. Uh, see, if you're not careful, you can let the past dictate what you think about the future. 
just because it's in the, it happened in the past, it does not happen to happen in the future. See, we need to let go of the past and grab hold of the future. Too many times people, they don't want to let go. But if you're going to move forward, you have to let go of the past. Now you cannot change anything that happened this past year. But there's two things you can do. You can remember and then let that be a learning lesson for you. You see, remember the things and let it be a learning opportunity or a learning lesson of what to do and what not to do. You see, there, when we're learning sometimes, we learn what to do, we learn what not to do. What usually gives us that, learn, that learning experience? by what happened in the past, you know. Now, I probably won't get this right. I, I'm not very good at, at remembering jokes, but one time there was a young a, executive and he asked the retiring executive, he says, how did you become so, so successful? And uh, right, decisions. right decisions. He said, right decisions. And... <laughs> <laughs> Let me get my, my wife does this. Help me out. Turn her on. So the young guy said, Well, how did you learn to make right decisions? And he said, Experience, son, experience. And so the young man said, Well, sir, tell me, how did you get experience? And he said, Wrong decisions, son, wrong decisions. So you see, there it is. I told you, I'm not very good at remembering stuff like that. You know, I. Uh, this transition from the past to the future or transition from one area in your life to another area in your life, it can be an exciting time, but it also can be, can be and probably will be a very challenging time. Now, you know, I go back and I remember when dad transitioned from pastoring into the traveling ministry and it was an exciting to some extent because we were moving to a new place and then you go to the different churches and you see everything that's happening. But uh, on the other hand, it was very challenging also. It was challenging for us as a family because uh, we didn't get to go all the time. He was gone. We were at home. Mom was, mom, mom was there with me and my sis. And, and the finances sometimes wasn't very good, but he just kept at the transition and it paid off in a big way. I mean, this ministry is what it is today and because he made the transition from one ministry to another. And, uh, you know, in the Bible, we see that people go through transitions, you know, uh, Let's look briefly here in a minute at one of these transitions. You find it over in Joshua 1. Over in Joshua 1, you'll find a transition. After the death of Moses, the, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all the people of the land which I am given to you, uh, given to them, the, cho the children of Israel. Now, man, it seems like God is a little bit insensitive here. Here, Joshua has served Moses for 40 years, and, uh, and now the Lord is not even letting him have a chance to, to uh, look around and, and, and sort of uh, see what Moses had done and so forth. He said, no, hey, Moses, my servant is dead. Now you get up and go. God does not have much room for the past. It's the future. It's what is in front of you that counts. And the reason is, is because the past cannot be changed, but the future can 
See, the past with the children of Israel, they didn't go into the, 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 the land, promised land. But now they look to the future, they go to the promised land. You know, uh, God was trying here to get Joshua out of looking at, looking at Moses and looking to Moses and get him to listen. You got to transition from being an assistant now. You got to transition. You got to be the leader. You know, <laughs> he was saying to him, Joshua, you can't sing, change the circumstances, but you can change your thinking and your attitude. So Joshua, he changed his thinking and his attitude and became the successful new leader of Israel. A lady by the name of Vivian Larimore said this, I shut the door on yesterday and throw away the key throw the key away tomorrow holds no fear for me since i found today joshua made the transition successfully and he led the people into the promised land the whole nation was blessed because joshua made a transition from one position to the next position you know, we got to remember that others' well-being sometimes depends on us making a successful transition from one thing to another. Often, you have to turn your back on yesterday and boldly face tomorrow. The reason you turn your back on yesterday is because yesterday is over. Everything that happened there is history. So you might as well forget it. Turn your back on it because when you transition to the future, there is opportunity. There is something there. Now, actually what we need to realize transition is a normal part of life. I, I, I want to speak to you about six things that if you're going to transition that you're going to have to have. Six things that if you're going to make successful transition in any transition that there is, transition from one job to another, transitioning from one thing to another thing, so you might want to write these down. <clears throat> First of all, you've got to have an expectant attitude. What does that mean? That me means that you began to see that the future is bright and expecting God to move in your life. an expectant attitude. Continually expect good things to happen. Okay, secondly, you've got to have a positive attitude. What do I mean by that? I mean, you've got to think positively. How many of you have been around people that you can tell by the way they're talking that their thinking is negative? They're always talking about why it can't be done rather than why it can happen. Oh, you don't think that can happen, do you? You know, uh, I think used to, they used to be on television back in the 50s, there's something about, there's a television broadcast, that, uh, I forget what it was called. It, anyway, it was dealing with things that people said can't be done. And so they went out and did it. Somebody did it. You know, if you think you can, you can. If you think you can't, you can't. That's being positive. That's the positive attitude. You know, instead of becoming fearful when you face new opportunities, begin to think positive. 
instead of, oh, I wonder what's going to happen. I wonder if they, how this is going to be. Start saying, this is going to be great. This is new. Positive. See, this is not, actually it's an opportunity. When you move from one place to another, opportunity to trust God for a new move in your life, a new level, an opportunity. Hey, an opportunity to do something you've never done before. An opportunity to discover what you really can do. My dad only got to see me participate in one athletic event in my entire life, and that was a track meet. And so uh, he was down on the infield with me, and, and, and I went, and I'm running the 220-yard dash back then, and that's what it was. And you start over here on the curb and come around and finish down here. Now, I come, I come off that curb, and I'm coming down that straight, and I think I'm giving it everything I got. And he's down there by the finish line, and I'm on the inside. I'm on the inside lane anyway. And he leaned out like this, and he put up his hand and said, "He's catching you." Well, man, I, 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 I just, boy, I really reached back and put everything I had into it. And I hit the finish line and and stepped off of the track and looked around. I'm ten yards ahead of everybody. <laughs> you know what my dad said to me? He said, "Now you know how fast you can really run." Because he was encouraging me to reach back and run harder than I had ever run in my life. And of course, I wanted to do it because he was there, it's, uh, you know. But it's an opportunity when, you, when you're facing transition, have a positive attitude because it's, it's an opportunity for you to find out what you can really do. Did you know most of us can do more than we are doing? And it all has to do with our attitudes. Now, you've got to have a, an, an attitude of being forgetful about the past and moving forward to the future. You know, have, be, have an enthusiastic attitude. That's, not, that's, the, that's the, what? That's the, which one is that? One, two, three. That's the fourth one. Enthusiastic attitude. An enthusiastic attitude. With enthusiasm, you have momentum. But when you lose your momentum, you lose the power to move forward. Uh, you see this happen in sporting events all the time. One team is really moving and they're doing and they're doing. And so they just sort of relax and let up and they lose the momentum. The other team gets the momentum and comes back and beats them. See, you you got to have an enthusiastic attitude and, you know, <laughs> dip, see difficulties as a chance to overcome. Now, you got to have a wise attitude. You got to be wise as you make a transition. And a transition can be feel a little abnormal because it's different. It's something that you've never, something you've never done before. Now, as you, what does having a wise attitude mean? It means that you surround yourself with good, godly counsel and listen to what some of them have to say. You see, if young ministers will listen, I can tell them some things that they can do to not make some mistakes I made. Because I've been preaching for 52, 53 years. I don't know how long it is. Huh? 56 years, she said. Now, she's the math not person, not me. Now, it, and thank God, I have a lot of the young ministers, they come and they ask me this and ask me questions. And because I've been there and done it and messed up. But see, with wise counsel, they don't have to make the mistakes I made. Hello. And, and with wise counsel, you don't have to make the mistakes that some other people make. 
Now, have a realistic attitude. That's the last one. A realistic attitude. What does that mean? That means don't expect more out of yourself than is realistic. Every one of us has capabilities and expect, you need to expect to reach your highest potential. But don't put unrealistic expectations. You see, don't put expectations on people that are unrealistic. Don't put expectations on yourself that's unrealistic. You see, when it comes to uh, seeing things and more or less a visionary, I do that. But I, I'm not going to put the unrealistic expectation on myself of trying to des- put it all together and design it and put it down where, you know, <laughs> Lynette, that's her and, and others. Uh, now, if, if they put together, if they take what I talk to them, my vision, and they put it down in an order, I can do something with it. That's me. See, you need to learn who you are so you can transition into, into other areas. And, and it doesn't mean you can't accomplish it. It means you have to have some wise counsel. You have to know how to move into it. But however, a new year gives us an opportunity to step into new situations, gives us an opportunity to move out of what we had last year into a new year. Let us determine to have the right attitude so we can transition into the opportunities that lie ahead in this new year. I believe that God will show up in a greater way in your life in this new year. And I believe if you will follow follow him, you'll find out that when you come to the end of next year, you will have transitioned into a new life, a better life, because you were willing to let go of the past and transition into the new. I trust you got a hold of what I was talking about, about transition, because if you will use the principles that I talked about, you can transition your life from one thing to another without any any problems or That's right. so and, forth. You know, honey, I was thinking, uh, I want to just say some of you are going through transitions that you really don't understand why. But I want to let you know that God has a plan. And if you'll follow his plan and he is leading you in, in a transition that you need to be in to get to the next step and to the next place that he has for you and so if you will just take that transition and and, in peace and and not be in turmoil about it God will take you to a much greater place than you ever thought could ever happen in your life yes that's true Hallelujah. amen and hey talking about uh, plans for us and purposes we have a book, my dad's book, Plans, Purposes, and Pursuit. And this is a tremendous book. I don't yes, know it is. how many people I have heard that this helped them tremendously. And then... Very good to read at the beginning of the year. Yes, very good. Yes. And then I've got a, a, a CD that I did called You're Not of This World. Well, actually, some said, well, we are. Yes, we are of this world in the natural. But I'm talking about too often Christians let the world dominate them and we let it rule our thoughts and our words and we need to let the things of God dominate us and that's what I'm talking about here. Uh, These two items are for $14.95. You need to get this. These things really help you at the first of the year. That's a savings of $4. Yeah, it saves $4. But the reason that we're doing these here at the first of the year, beginning of the year, is because I, I... People need That's right. to get a hold of this because it will. They, they've got 11 months in front of them. Mm-hmm. They've got 11 months in front of them. So 
uh, get a hold of this so it can you change. You need to get into God's plan. It's yeah, a then, whole lot easier. Yeah, it's a whole lot either whenever you're, you're in God's plans and you're pursuing what He wants. That's and right. And you 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 got His purposes in mind. That's right. Well, you know what? We're only two weeks away can from Winter Bible that? Seminar. Can you believe that? Oh, wow. The Winter year Bible, already is going by fast. Winter then. Bible Seminar 2016. And, hey, it's going to be Worldwide Homecoming. Now, Hey, when we say worldwide homecoming, some people say, well, it's just for the rain. No, it's not for the rain. It's for everybody th to come. A and if you've been a partner with this ministry, if you've never come before, I want you to come. Worldwide homecoming, they're coming from all, all over, over the all world. the 200 and I, I think it's 213, there. but I signed some more today just in, up in the office. Wow. I signed for some more for schools. schools to open up. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how many it is really. Yes. But they're coming with, uh, and, and a lot of them, on, on, especially on Thursday night, we're going to have mm -hmm. a huge flag ceremony, and many of them will be dressed in their native, native dress, yes, costumes, yes. And, and, oh, it's just going to be great. You're going to want to get here. So, hey, it's right here on the Rama campus. Hey, February go, the 14th through the 19th. Yeah, go online to rama.org, and all the information is there That's that right. you need to know. Plan to get here Okay. That's right. And in March, we're going to be in Fort Worth, Texas. You're talking Texas. about March already. That's the third March. month of the year. Good Lord. I know. <laughs> wow. In March, we're going to be in Texas. Yeah. Once again, uh, March 6th through the 8th, uh, they're at Abundant Life Family Church. They're in Fort Worth, Texas. In Fort Worth. Yeah. And then we're going to go on down to Waco, Texas. Yeah. That is March 9th through the 11th. We're going to be at Family Worship Center with Pastors Daryl and Kim Price. And you can go on online to rhema.org and mm -hmm. get all the service times and all That's the information. Right. Just go there and do that. Well, you know, this is the first of the year and, and the, the first month has just gone gone Bye by. Fast. And uh, you, uh, we, we, I want to thank all of the word partners that were with us, yes. that have been with us, many of you for many, many years. And because of you, we are able to continue this That's broadcast right. worldwide. Yes. I mean, we were just somewhere recently here mm -hmm. in the States, and we had I, mean, I had, I had six people come up to me and say, we watch the television program, yes. and it's so, and one of them was giving me a testimony about how God used the television program yes. to help change their life, and you weren't partners. You have a you have a part in this, yes. and somebody said, "Well, how do you become a word partner?" Well, you go to rama.org and slash wpc, mm -hmm. or just go to rama.org and you can find the information there. That's right. And you say, "Well, what does a word partner do?" Well, a word partner is somebody that once a month they send us an offering. Yes. And because of that offering, when they all come in here together, we are able to continue to help bring hope, hope help, help, and, and healing, healing to, to the world. world. Thank you for watching Rama Praise with Ken and Lynette Hagen. Ken, Lynette, and Rama Bible Training College are committed to reaching the entire world with the gospel of Jesus Christ and training laborers for the end time harvest. If you have prayer requests or would like more information, please write, call, or visit our website. Thank you for being with us today and for your faithful support. And remember, there is hope, help, and healing for a hurting world.